One Piece. Story was made by Aichiro Oda. Chapter 22. You are a rare and precious animal, too. The sun-drenched sky stretched endlessly above as Luffy and his crew sailed across the vast seas. The wind billowed through their hair, carrying with it a sense of excitement and adventure. Luffy's eyes sparkled with joy as he proclaimed, It's fixed! Nami, having just finished mending Luffy's straw hat after it had been damaged by Buggy, packed away her knitting kit and warned him, I just mended the cuts. I think that should do it. Try not to poke it too much. Luffy couldn't contain his excitement and immediately started poking the top of his straw hat with childlike enthusiasm. Right, right, thanks. You did a great job in fixing this hat, he exclaimed. Despite Nami's warnings, Luffy's poking proved too much and a hole appeared in the hat. Frustrated, Nami stabbed Luffy in the forehead with her sewing needle. Didn't you listen to what I just said? She barked. Stop poking me with that needle, it hurts. Luffy cried out in pain, but Nami continued to shout at him. It's useless if I hit you, so I have to use the needle. Ah, uh, that makes sense. Luffy justifies the situation. Just then, Zoro, who had been sleeping, woke up and joined the conversation. Annoyed by the noise, he grumbled, You guys are too noisy, I can't sleep with all this noise. Hey, I'm hungry, Luffy insisted as Zoro continued the momentum. Share some food. Addressing him on the other ship, Nami chastised him. Oh, please, you need to be more prepared. You don't bring food or water and you dare to go to sea. You underestimated the sea. Amidst their banter, Luffy's keen eyes spotted something in the distance. He pointed excitedly and exclaimed, I see something. Nami sighed and replied, It's a miracle you've survived up to now. There's always a way, Zoro replied, taking a bite of a loaf of bread. Eager for adventure, Luffy persisted, Hey, there's an island. Using her binoculars, Nami surveyed the location and commented to the others, that island is no good. It's unpopulated, so it's useless. Let's just keep going. However, Luffy and Zoro paid no heed to Nami's plea. They rowed their boat straight toward the island. Wait, Nami demanded, but her words fell on deaf ears. Luffy casually informed them as they approached the island. Let's see if we can find someone who would join us there. Zoro added, and let's look for food, too. You know, Nami was right. We seem to have no plans. And so, as they landed upon the island, Luffy couldn't contain his joy as he remarked, We've reached the isolated island. There's nothing here but forest. Cautiously, Nami responded carefully. Like I said, this is an unpopulated island. It would be weird if you found someone for the crew here. Luffy's gaze shifted back to the ship, noticing that Zoro had remained sound asleep. Hey, you're sleeping, Luffy called out. But Nami held him back, saying, let him sleep, he's still injured. You're right, well, let's go, Luffy declared as he led himself into the dense forest. Nami questioned him, go where? Luffy pressed on, his eyes shining with excitement. Towards the forest, you never know, there might be people there. Nami warned him, there's no one here but poisonous snakes and wild animals. Undeterred, Luffy and Nami ventured deeper into the forest. As they walked, they came across a strange creature on all fours, a white dog with a red feathered tail, red chicken comb, and wattles on its head like a chicken. Curiously, Nami questioned, what is that? They continued their exploration and soon stumbled upon another peculiar creature, a snake with white fur and rabbit-like ears hissing at them. Luffy couldn't contain his excitement, exclaiming, hey, look, what a weird rabbit. It's weird, all right, Nami, completely bewildered, remarked but I think it's a mutant snake. Luffy then pointed out another creature on the ground saying, what about that lion? A pig with a brown lion's mane casually walked about, drawing their attention. Intrigued, Nami pressed, that, that's a pig, isn't it? A weird mutant pig, this forest, it's really weird. Suddenly a voice boomed out, warning them, don't come closer, get out. Startled by the warning, Luffy looked around, trying to locate the source of the voice. Nami questioned the mysterious voice. What was that sound? Who are you? The voice continued, booming with authority. Me? I am the forest guardian. Perplexed, Luffy pondered his name aloud. That's right. 
If you still want to live, then leave at once, the voice persisted. You are pirates, aren't you? Confused by the question, Luffy confirmed. Yes, why did he ask that? So you are pirates, the forest guardian pressed menacingly. Listen well, don't take a step further into the forest, or else you will face the forest judgment. Who cares? Luffy calls out the guardian's bluff. What exactly is that? Nami questions. While Luffy calls him a weird guy, she demanded, Where are you? Come out! Fixed on a particular direction, Luffy confidently stated, Looks like the voice is coming from there. Hey, I told you not to come closer! Receive the forest judgment, the voice bellowed. Without warning, a bullet shot Luffy from behind. Using his devil fruit ability, Luffy bounced the bullet back, surprising both Nami and himself. Relieved, Nami remarked, What a shock! That was a bullet, right? So, bullets don't hurt you. Luffy responded, Yeah, but that surprised me too. The voice, now filled with panic, exclaimed, What? What kind of thing are you? That's our line, Luffy replied honestly. Following the direction of the shot, Luffy and Nami found a pistol with gunpowder still smoking and a strange object resembling a chest with a green bush on top. Perplexed, they looked down at it and wondered, the bullet was fired from there. What's this thing? It doesn't look normal, Nami adds. To their surprise, the strange object suddenly moved and ran away, only to trip and fall, revealing a person inside. It wasn't a bush after all, but a giant green afro. The individual had a pear-shaped face with a beard and a unibrow. Frustrated, the compressed guy shouted, Hey, why don't you lift me up? As he struggled to get up. Nami and Luffy looked down at him as Nami remarked, Wow, it's a man. Why are you so angry? You tripped yourself. The compressed guy retorted, Lift me up. But Luffy, finding his appearance amusing, exclaimed, What an interesting cauliflower head. Cauliflower man. With the help of Luffy and Nami, Gaimon managed to get back on his feet. As they gathered around, Gaimon expressed his fascination. Rubber rubber fruit. It's a devil fruit, right? I've heard about that before, but it's the first time I've met someone who actually ate that kind of fruit. Optimist, Luffy responded. It's the first time I've met someone who's stuck in a treasure chest, too. You're like a son in a box. Yeah, my parents took care of me when I was still small. Are you an idiot? Gaimon explained. I got stuck in here and I can't get out. I've lived on this island like this for 20 years already. Can't you understand what I've been going through? What? Twenty years? Nami questions with shock. You've been living on this island all by yourself? Gaimon agreed. That's really stupid, Luffy remarked. What did you say? I'm gonna kill you! Gaimon barked with anger. Walking back, Gaimon tries to explain his situation. Twenty years? What a long time. My hair and mustache have already grown this long, and even my eyebrows are connected. He looked back at him. I haven't talked to anybody for twenty years. Gaimon winced in pain as Luffy tried to pull him out of the chest, crying out, It hurts! It hurts! What the hell are you doing? Luffy struggled as he failed to understand. Why can't I pull you out? He questioned. Gaimon's voice rose with agony. Stop! Stop! My neck's gonna break! Luffy, realizing the danger, released his grip on the trapped figure. He listened intently as Gaimon barked back in anger. You're crazy! I haven't moved in years! My body and this treasure chest have already become one! If you're going to forcefully pull me out, then my body will be done for. Curiously, Nami questioned him. But how did you get to this island? Gaimon answered soundly. You mentioned earlier that you were pirates, right? He pushed. Yes, there are three of us, Luffy chimed in. Gimon's eyes gleamed with nostalgia as he began to share his own history. I was also once a pirate, he admitted. It's nice being a pirate venturing for treasures. It's even okay if I risk my life. Do you have any maps? He eagerly inquired. He held it out to Gaimon. We have a navigational map for the Grand Line. I'm going for the One Piece, Luffy declared. What? One Piece? Gaimon exclaimed in shock. And you intend to go to the Grand Line? Luffy and Gaimon gathered around the map, their eyes tracing the intricate lines and symbols. Curiously, Gaimon asked, Which one is the Grand Line? Next to him, Luffy studied the map intently with a mischievous grin forming on his face. 
This Uncle Cauliflower Head you don't know? He playfully teased. Their laughter echoed through the air. I don't really know how to read maps, Gaimon admitted. Oh, I see, Luffy laughed. Meanwhile, Nami, observing the lighthearted banter, couldn't help but murmur to herself, is that how pirates are supposed to talk? She interrupted the conversation, refocusing their attention. Listen, do you know the red line? She questioned. Guimon's response was swift and confident. I know, that's the land that separates the oceans. Nami nodded in acknowledgement. Yes, there are two oceans in this world, and the land that splits the world's two oceans is called the Red Line. Using the city of Red Line as the center, draw a line around the world across the opposite way, and that is the Grand Line. In history, only the pirate king Gold Roger has conquered this route. Also, it is the most dangerous route. Luffy points out, one piece is surely in that place. That means we need to sail around the world. Idiots! That place is not that easy to find, Gaimon warned them. It also has another name, the Pirate's Graveyard, he continued. Long ago, I saw pirates that returned from the Grand Line. Every one of them had lost their spirit and looked as if they were dead. Their facial expressions were even more painful to look at. It looked like they had met something horrid, maybe a dreadful pirate or perhaps a monster. Nobody dared to talk about it. You could see from their look the horror of the Grand Line. Nami and Luffy stood in awe as Guy Mon described the situation. Guy Mon's voice softened as he added, I have no other proof than this. The rumors only made it more and more mysterious. It's already been more than 20 years since the beginning of the Great Pirate Era. That treasure might be nothing more than a legend. Can you see now? One piece is only a dream inside a dream. Luffy listened intently as he asked, Is that so? I think that there is a better ending, right? Nami interjected with a sigh. If a person really found such a treasure, he wouldn't tell anybody. That is what a smart person would do. Luffy's smile widened as he replied with confidence. I will surely find the treasure because I'm always lucky. I just can't understand where you get such confidence, Nami responds back. Guy Mon, observing Luffy's unwavering spirit, watched silently, contemplating his own journey. Then, with a resolute voice, he declared, Now I will tell you why I can't leave this island. Intrigued, Luffy urged him on. Oh, why is that? Guimon's calm voice washed over them as he began to share his history, his past intertwining with the island itself. It's because I'm not mature. I don't know how to adapt to the changes in situations he confessed. It happened 20 years ago. I was a pirate, and the ship docked on this island because we found a map that said there was treasure here. The crew of pirates landed on the shores of a newly discovered island, their ship anchored nearby. The captain surveyed the area with a mixture of excitement and frustration evident on his weathered face. We don't have to look for it anymore, he exclaimed. 200 men searched this area and didn't find a thing in three weeks except for this broken, empty treasure chest. He kicked the useless artifact away in frustration. All aboard, everyone, he called out to his crew. They all agreed to return to the ship, disappointed that they found nothing in their venture. As they made their way back to the ship, Guy Mon, now a young 20-year-old man, couldn't tear his eyes away from the island. His crewmates noticed his lingering gaze and called out to him. Hey, Guy Mon, what are you doing? We're gonna leave soon they shouted, trying to get his attention. Gaimon, adorned with a short, trimmed afro, replied absent-mindedly, Okay. But his gaze remained fixed on the island as he continued scanning the surroundings. We only searched around this area in these three weeks, but nobody has ever climbed up there, Gaimon thought to himself. As the rest of the crew walked towards the ship, Gaimon made up his mind. I have to go up there, he muttered, his eyes gleaming with newfound purpose. He spotted a hill they had all searched around, but not its summit. With all his might, Guy Mon began his climb towards the top, oblivious to the dangers that awaited him. Reaching the summit, Guy Mon's eyes widened in disbelief. I couldn't believe what I saw with my own eyes, he thought to himself. In a dip on the top, he found not just one, but five unopened treasure chests, ready for the taking. Overwhelmed by his discovery, Gaimon couldn't contain his excitement. 
He shouted, trying to call his crew back. It's here! I found it! Hey, everybody! Victory was within his grasp. But suddenly the edge of the hill snapped under Guy Mon's weight and he began plummeting down. With a painful crash, he landed inside the very same empty treasure chest his crew had found earlier, losing consciousness upon impact. When he finally woke up, he found himself trapped within the chest. Struggling to free himself, Guy Mon crawled towards the shore, but it was too late. His companions had already left him behind as they sailed to the horizon. Alone on the shore, Guy Mon smirked to himself. Wait, that means that this treasure is all mine. This is very good, he chuckled. However, his excitement soon turned to frustration as he attempted to return to the summit to retrieve the treasure. I can't climb unless I leave this chest. Let me out, let me out, he shouted in panic, his voice echoing across the island. But no one came to his aid. As the sun began to set, casting a golden glow over the deserted island, Gaimon's desperation grew. Everyone come back, he cried out, hoping that his crew would hear him and return. But they never did. Luffy approached Gaimon curiously. No one came to this island in the past 20 years, he asked, seeking confirmation. Gaimon bitterly approved. Yes, people came. There were many times. They were all pirates looking for the treasure, he replied, his grip tightening around his pistol. But I used the forest judgment to scare them all away. My eyes were never wrong. I'm very sure that there's a lot of treasure in that large rock hill, he then proclaimed with a shout. But I've been stuck in this chest. I've only been able to protect the treasure these past 20 years. That treasure is all mine. That's right. Those are yours, Uncle. Luffy nodded in response. Nami interjected hastily. Okay, Gaimon, we'll help you bring down those treasures. Gaimon looked at her in shock, hardly able to believe what he was hearing. What? Is that true? That's very nice. I knew I hadn't misjudged you, he replied. But Luffy couldn't resist making a comment. Aren't you a professional thief that steals treasure from pirates? He asked Nami. Nami barked at Luffy. Don't speak nonsense. I have principles too, she retorted, defending her integrity. As the group approached the hill, Guy Mon looked back, nostalgia washing over him. This is it. It's been a long time since the last time I came here he mused. Luffy questioned him. But why haven't you asked anyone to help you before? Gaimon sighed and replied, because I don't trust anybody, and anyone who sees me like this wouldn't believe me anyway. Gaimon remembered his tragic undertaking as he shouted with pride, I've waited for this moment so long, today is the happiest day of my life. Nami placed a hand on Luffy's shoulder, encouraging him. Okay, go for it, she urged him. Luffy looked at her, you want me to go up there? He asked. Nami persisted. Of course. Do you think that I can climb this? She replied. Gaimon, filled with anticipation, responded. I'm counting on you, straw hat kid. Luffy, taking a deep breath, stretched his rubbery arm upward, reaching for the top of the rocky summit. With a burst of strength, he launched himself into the air, soaring towards the summit effortlessly. Gaimon watched in awe as Luffy disappeared from his view, only to reappear moments later, holding a wooden treasure chest in his hands. There really are some treasure chests up there. There are five of them, Luffy declared. Ecstatic, Gaimon praised him, unable to contain his excitement. That's great! Quick, drop them here, he exclaimed, flustered. But don't hit me! However, Luffy had a different idea. Looking down at Gaimon, he smiled mischievously and responded, No way! Gaimon's shock was evident, while Nami's fury burned bright. What the hell are you talking about? Stop joking around and drop the treasure chests now! Hurry up and drop them to me! She shouted furiously. But Luffy stood his ground, refusing to comply. I don't want to do that, he stated firmly. Nami's anger only grew. Don't you dare come down here again, she warned him. Gaimon, trying to make sense of the situation, looked down in shame. Forget about it. It's okay if he doesn't want to drop them here, he said, accepting his fate. But Nami couldn't understand his reaction. She pushed further, demanding answers. How can that be okay? That's your treasure, she exclaimed. Straw hat kid, Gaimon called out to Luffy from below, tears welling up in his eyes. You, you are a good person, he said, his voice choked with emotion. Nami, taken aback, looked at Gaimon in confusion. What? What are you saying? She questioned. With tears streaming down his face, 
Gaimon wiped them away with his hands as he tried to explain. Actually, I've thought about it before. It might be a possibility, but I always try hard to not think about. The treasure chests are empty, aren't they? He sorrowfully confessed. Nami was left stunned, unable to find words. Luffy, stepping in to provide an answer, replied, They're all empty. The realization hit Gaimon hard as he said aloud, The treasure in the map actually did exist. But by the time we found the map, the treasure had already been taken by other people, he explained with resignation. How can that be? Nami pondered with disbelief. The treasure you guarded for twenty years is just a bunch of empty chests. The disappointment hung heavy in the air, but Luffy laughed aloud, trying to lift Gaimon's spirits. Don't be so disappointed, uncle. You meeting us after these twenty years is a really good thing, too. Because if it had been thirty years, you might have already been dead. Don't worry, there is still the great treasure, one piece, waiting for us. Will you join us, uncle? He offered, extending an invitation. Gaimon looked up at Luffy, relief washing over him. You, you, you're inviting me? He questioned with disbelief. Back on the shore, Luffy addressed Gaimon once again. Uncle, are you sure you're really going to stay on this island? He asked, seeking his confirmation. Gaimon proudly replied, Yes, thank you for inviting me, but I still want to be the forest guardian. He declined. Nami couldn't help but question his decision. Gaimon smiled happily as he explained, Because there are many rare animals in this forest. Nami nodded. You're right, we saw a strange snake and pig she acknowledged. Gaimon continued, his voice filled with warmth. There were many people who came to this island to get those animals, and living here for 20 years made me grow to love those animals. I can't leave them behind, he revealed. Luffy responded casually. You're a rare and precious animal too, uncle. Gaimon quickly retorted, I'm gonna kill you. But soon it was replaced by a sense of acceptance and understanding. Now that there are no more treasures, I feel somewhat relieved. I can now live on this island more comfortably, he admitted. Luffy honestly remarked, It's too bad. You are an interesting person, Uncle. Gaimon looked up at him, a mixture of gratitude and determination in his eyes. I'm sure you'll find good companions for your crew, and also find the One Piece, then buy the whole world, he proclaimed. That's right, I can do that, Luffy declared. With a final farewell, Luffy and Nami returned to their ship, leaving Zoro still soundly asleep on the small boat. Gaimon waved goodbye to the departing pirates, tears of joy streaming down his face. He watched as the beloved strange animals that had become his companions bid farewell to the pirates. After leaving Gaimon behind, the boats sailed towards the Grand Line once again.